Hello everyone. Welcome to this video lecture. Today we will be studying song number 63 from Gitanjali by Rabindranath Tagore which is included in paper 1 of English literature in BA 4th semester taught in Sri Dev Suman University, Uttarakhand. Before jumping directly into the text, let's have a short introduction about the poet himself. Rabindranath Tagore is a well-known name which everyone who is a student of literature knows about. Rabindranath Tagore gained much popularity and also secured a position in the world literary map when he became the first non-European to receive the Nobel Prize for Literature in the year 1913 for Gitanjali, which was a collection of 100 three poems known as song offerings which the nobel prize committee recognized as profoundly sensitive fresh and beautiful verse by which with consummate skill he has made his poetic thought expressed in his own english words a part of the literature of the west about uh, tagore's childhood and early life popularly called as kabi guru Tagore was born on 7 May 1861 to Devendranath Tagore and Sarada Devi in Calcutta, Calcutta now Kolkata. Tagore was the youngest child, that is he was the 14th one, and uh, but uh, he was raised mostly by his servants because uh, he had lost his mother at a very young age. He was a child prodigy and uh, as a result, he, was, he started writing at an early age, at a very early age and uh, also he got influenced by his brothers and sisters who were also intellectuals. He travelled a lot with his father and accumulated a lot of knowledge on various subjects. In the year 1878, his father decided to send him to London to continue his studies there. But in the year 1880 that is after only two years he was called back by his father as he was not doing as Tagore was not doing very well in studies then uh, he was married to uh, married with Mranalini Devi at the age of 22 he died on 7 August 1941 in Kolkata at the age of 80 let us see Tagore as a poet a poet, he was a poet, he was a writer, musician, artist, humanitarian and also he was the first non-European to be awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature that we have already discussed and he was also a key figure in, key figure of the Bengal Renasa. But somewhere deep at his heart, he always took pleasure in calling himself a poet at first place. I am a poet and nothing else, said Tagore once. Tagore was a poet par excellence, although he wrote essays, short stories, novels and plays and almost he wrote on in all the literary genres with equal ease but it would not be an exaggeration to call him a pure poet. Tagore's poetry is the epitome of Indian culture and has been accorded international recognition. He also took an active part or active interest in a widespread range of social, cultural and artistic endeavors. Ravindranath Tagore and Indian writing in English as we know Tagore, he is popularly known as the Bard of Bengal. One of the questions that has been raised while speaking of Tagore as a poet is that can we situate, can we situate him in the tradition of Indian writing in English in true sense as some of the critics deny him a place in this tradition because he wrote or he preferred to wrote prefer to write primarily in Bengali language that is his mother tongue 
However, it should not be forgotten that he was a bilingual writer who always preferred to write in his mother tongue that is Bangla but he also wrote in English with an equal ease as he was well aware of the language as well as the culture. He wrote many essays and poems in English and also translated the poems written in Bangla into English. Therefore, uh, of which, you know, Gitanjali is a perfect example. Gitanjali was a collection of poems which he translated from Bangla into English. Therefore, it can be aptly considered as one, uh, you know, as uh, Tagore can be aptly considered as one of the major figures of the literary tradition that is called Indian writing in English. He penned many notable works such as Gitanjali, Gora, Ghare Bayre, and many more. However, it was the, uh, Gitanjali that won him Nobel Prize. The preface of Gitanjali was written by W. B. Yeats, who is also one of the greatest English language poets of the 20th century and who also received the Nobel Prize for Literature in the year 1923. W. B. Yeats said it uh, said about Gitanjali that it had stared his blood as nothing had for years. So Tagore has secured a rightful place for him in the Indian writing in English category. Gitanjali and Introduction Gitanjali is a personal quest of the poet for the divine. Tagore who is a well recognized who is well recognized as a mystic has expressed the great tradition of spirituality through these song offerings. As a mystic, Tagore has his own way of looking at the world. Gitanjali is full of such experiences where he expresses his communion with the divine in various ways. Thus Gitanjali is derived from two root words. Geet means song and Anjali means offerings. Thus Gitanjali means song offerings. Gitanjali was published initially in the year 1910. Then Tagore translated it into prose poems in English as Gitanjali Song Offerings, which was published in the year 1912 with an introduction by W. B. Yeats. This volume, this book consists of 103 songs. Let us have a short look at the religious mysticism in Gitanjali. Religious mysticism is one of the major themes in Gitanjali. Although mysticism can be defined in various ways, however, in Gitanjali it is in the form of highest expression of religion or the union with the divine. As we know that communion is the essence of any mystical experience. Thus, Tagore talks about his mystical experience which results from the joy that arises out of the poet's communion with God. It is almost difficult to speak about the nature of God as demonstrated by the poet in Gitanjali. But his realization of God is very unique as he experiences God and the way he encounters him here and there every now and then this or that and also in almost in everything it means that he is all pervasive it means that god is all pervasive his god is all pervasive which is the true which is also true to the upanishadic tradition of the conception of god which is very interesting before jumping into the explanation part, let us read the poem itself. Song number 63 
from Gitanjali. Thou hast made me known to friends whom I knew not. Thou hast given me seats in homes not my own. Thou hast brought the distant near and made a brother of the stranger. I am uneasy at heart when I have to leave my accustomed shelter. I forget that there abides the old and the new, and that there also thou abidest. Through birth and death, in this world or in others, wherever thou leadest me, it is thou, the same, the one companion of my endless life, who ever linkest my heart with bonds of joy to the unfamiliar. When one knows thee, then alien there is none. Then no door is shut. Oh, grant me my prayer that I may never lose the bliss of the touch of the one in the play of the many. About the poem. This poem is a direct expression of pantheism. Pantheism is a doctrine that identifies God with the universe or regards universe as the manifestation, as a manifestation of God himself. So this poem also expresses poet's belief that God reveals himself both in nature and man. Hence he, his faith in reincarnation of the soul. The poem emphasizes on the fact that God is everywhere. He is all pervasive. He reveals himself in various shapes and forms according to his will. So there is a presence of God at every heart. Thus human beings are the children of the one and therefore as the source is one, they are all friends and brothers. And time and place do not matter when relationship is so close. The poet then tells that man fears death for he will have to leave his accustomed shelter which he has become habitual of or used to. However, out of this, out of this ignorance man forgets that. The poet tells that out of this ignorance, state of ignorance man forgets that in every birth God is his constant companion. This is the central message in the poem.